My name is Amy. I've been married for five years to my husband, Tom. Tom and I met at a group blind date, it was actually more like a forced invitation from my coworker. I wasn't particularly excited about it, so I just sat at the corner of the table and had some drinks. It was an all-you-can-drink coffee event, so I didn't want to miss out. Tom was the one who spoke to me when I was only thinking about that. Is this your first time at a group blind date? I was dragged here against my will too. It's pretty boring, isn't it, he said, smiling at me as he spoke. He had been sitting at the corner, just like me, silently drinking. Both of us were reluctantly brought to the group blind date. Tom and I surprisingly hit it off. We realized we had many shared interests, from favorite movies and books to the games we played. We started dating regularly since that day and eventually got into a relationship. We had been in a relationship for two years when Tom proposed to me at the apartment he was living in and we got married. About six months into our marriage, I was fortunate enough to conceive a baby and decided to quit my job and become a full-time homemaker. My first plan was to take a short maternity and childcare leave because I actually enjoyed working. However, Tom told me, I want you to be a full-time homemaker. I think it's a good opportunity to do so. So, I became a full-time homemaker. I didn't mind doing housework since I didn't dislike them. In fact, during my pregnancy, I could relax every day and feel our baby growing inside me. After giving birth, I was able to witness his daily growth up close, and it brought me immense happiness. After our child was born, we started visiting Tom's parents' house more frequently. Tom has an older sister, Isabella, who got married before us but didn't have any children yet. Isabella and her husband lived happily near Tom's parents' house. Whenever we visited Tom's parents, we always stopped by Isabella's house. Isabella was very nice to me, and I liked her as well. I was looking forward more to visiting Isabella's house rather than going to my in-law's house. To be honest, I didn't particularly like going to my in-law's house because I would always get snide remarks from them when I visited. Every time we visited, they would always say, Oh, Amy, you came too. It would have been fine if just Tom and James came. James is our son. While it was nice that they loved our son, their obvious dislike towards me was difficult to deal with. Every time, they would say, Amy, you know you don't have to come, right? We just want to see Tom and James. This went on for a couple of years. One day, I got a call from Tom, who was at work. Amy, listen, something serious has happened, Tom was frantic on the phone. I thought something serious must have happened and said, what is wrong? Calm down and tell me what happened. God, yes, I'm sorry, I panicked. Actually, it's about my mom. What? Did something happen to your mother? My mom, she slipped at home. I was surprised that he called me for such a trivial reason. So she slipped at home? That happens to anyone, doesn't it? When I said that, my husband snapped back, what the heck are you talking about? My mom sprained her ankle at home, this is an emergency. An emergency over a sprained ankle, to be honest, I thought that was an overreaction. There was a time in the past when I was not feeling well, and Tom had to take care of James alone. During that time, while Tom wasn't watching, James slid down the stairs and ended up breaking his right ankle. I panicked at the time and suggested to Tom that we take him to the hospital, but Tom said, you're overreacting. In the end, I took James to the hospital, and everything turned out fine. Compared to that time, a sprained ankle was nothing. That's what I thought, but a sprained ankle means it's not broken, right? Shouldn't she just rest and get better? When I said that, Tom said, Amy, you're so cold. I didn't think you were like that. No, I didn't mean. Before I could finish, he said, I'm going back to work, and hung up the phone. Tom becomes very difficult when he's in a bad mood. He'd be mad for a long time and wouldn't forgive me until I apologized. Sure enough, Tom was in a foul mood when he got home. 
when I greeted him with, Hi Tom, how is your day? I'll heat up your dinner. Would you like to take a shower first? He ignored me. While I was heating up his dinner and setting it on the table, he went to take a shower. I thought I'd have to apologize, so I decided to apologize to Tom after he came out of the shower. Hey Tom, I'm sorry about the phone call earlier. It's your mom, so of course, you're worried. When I said that, Tom looked at me and said, if you understand, that's fine. Actually, I had something to discuss with you. Something to discuss? Yay. Remember my mom sprained her ankle? She won't be able to do housework for a while, so she asked us to live with her. Live with her until her ankle heals? No, from now on, permanently. Permanently? I was so shocked by Tom's unexpected statement that I inadvertently raised my voice. I quickly covered my mouth, worrying that I might wake James up. Why did she suddenly start talking about living together? I asked him after I regained my composure, and he said, why do you ask? I plan on living with them eventually, plus we should be worried about my mom, right? Eventually? I never agreed to that. What's the matter with you, Amy? Don't you care about my mom? I thought his mood was getting worse and worse. I am concerned, but to live together permanently, that's a bit much. Once I said that, it was obvious that Tom got upset, and he responded, if you're so against it, then I can take James and move back to my parents' home, you know. No way, that would undoubtedly be terrible. Being able to be with James is my greatest joy. Thinking so, I reluctantly agreed to Tom's suggestion of living with my in-laws. Once I agreed, Tom's mood instantly got better, and he began to smile. Looking back, I should have fought it through more thoroughly at that time, but I was rushed into making the extreme choice of either parting with James or moving in together. As soon as we decided to move into my in-law's house, Tom started packing. You'll be living with your grandmother and grandpa soon, he said, so he began packing with our son. James seemed happy as well, of course, he would be, to him, they're his wonderful grandparents. If James is happy, maybe that's what matters the most. I started to think that things might work out if I was patient, but it turned out that I was wrong. On the moving day, upon arriving at my in-law's house, they warmly welcomed us, well, but of course, not for me, only for Tom and James. They told me, oh Amy, you're coming too? It would have been just fine with Tom and James. Now we have to live with this. This is worrisome. They were clearly against me from that day on. I decided to keep a low profile and live quietly, but reality did not go as smoothly as I hoped. I had to do housework instead of my mother-in-law, who claimed she couldn't because of her sprained ankle. However, she would mess up the laundry that I had just hung up, saying, hey, you're hanging the laundry all wrong. Do it all over again. What is this lukewarm coffee? It's so bad I can't even drink it. My father-in-law would sometimes splash the hot coffee that I had just made for him. Tom should have seen all this, but he ignored it completely. The only one who defended me was James. Stop being mean to my mom. When James said that, my in-law smiled and responded, James, you've got it wrong. We're upset because your mom is doing things wrong. They kept blaming me, and these days continued for several months. I reached the end of my patience and decided to talk to Tom. Listen Tom, I've had enough. You see what's going on, don't you? If you won't help me, I don't want to live with my in-laws anymore. I pleaded with tears in my eyes, but Tom responded with a laugh. What? You're being dramatic. My parents are just trying to train you to be a proper wife. A proper wife? I'm doing my best but they keep making snide remarks and are asking me to stop nagging. It's your fault for being inadequate. Cool your head off, saying so, Tom went off to sleep. I mean, I may not be able to go on with him anymore. That's what I truly felt. If Tom continues to act like this and doesn't help me, even after another month, I would seriously consider leaving. That was my thought, 
however, a turning point arrived a week later. Even though it was his day off, Tom had gone out, which was unusual. When Tom returned home, he had a big smile on his face and called me into the room to say, Amy, we're moving to a condo. What? We're moving? I was surprised by Tom's unexpected announcement. Could it be that he was considering my feelings and had decided to move out? But would my in-laws even allow that? Feeling anxious, I asked him for clarification. I'm happy about the move, but does your mom know about this? Then Tom just grinned and said, of course, I've already talked it over with her. Tom seemed calm and usual that day, and I felt happy thinking he had made the decision with me in mind. I immediately accepted Tom's proposal to move, and the next day I started packing amidst my housework. Once we moved, I wouldn't have to deal with my in-laws anymore. With that thought, I was able to endure even their snide remarks, but on the day before the move, I happened to catch my mother-in-law packing her things. I cautiously asked her, Um, Mimael, why are you packing? What are you talking about? We're moving tomorrow, aren't we? I quickly contacted Tom in disbelief and asked, What's going on? What are you talking about? Now it's been decided that my parents are coming too. I was casually told just before I was elated, but this news made me feel as though I had hit rock bottom. I had thought it was going to be a move just for our family of three, but it turned out that my in-laws were coming too. However, I couldn't do anything about it at this point. The moving day came, and in the morning, we were headed to the condo. We'll be there soon, Tom said, looking excited. However, it seemed to be in a different location from the condo I'd heard about. The place we arrived at was a luxury condo that had just been built. Seeing my confusion, Tom turned to me and said, Amy, are you surprised? He said, looking excited. But isn't the rent here expensive? And he cut off my words, saying, just don't worry about it, okay? I was led into the room as I was told, and a room had been prepared for me as well. There were rooms for my in-laws and Tom as well, and everyone seemed excited, despite knowing we couldn't afford to live in such a luxury condo. I called Tom into the room and asked him, Hey, how much is the rent for this condo? Can we afford it? I asked, though mom and dad bought it, Tom said so casually. They bought it? They always say they don't have money and hit us up for money. I couldn't believe it. Where do they get that money from? They're always saying they're broke. It's a lie that they bought it, isn't it? I asked him seriously, and Tom snorted with laughter at my question. They bought it with your money, he said. What? What do you mean? His unexpected response made me break out in a cold sweat. That savings you had, they used that, he admitted, his tone still flippant. The savings he mentioned was the money I had painstakingly saved for James. That money was supposed to be used for James. Why would you do something so foolish? I couldn't hide my anger, but he snapped back, looking annoyed. Chill out, Amy, you can save up again. You're making a big deal out of nothing. You've got to be kidding me, I muttered, feeling something snap inside me. Unable to bear it any longer, I abruptly took James away from my in-laws and left the condo. I just couldn't stand being there anymore. What's wrong, Mom? James asked, puzzled by my sudden action. I had to try very hard to hold back my tears. But where could we go? My parents live far away, so we wouldn't be able to get there by train today. Then James asked, are we going to Aunt Isabella's house? Isabella was Tom's sister, and it was less than an hour's drive from our location. Right, I said to James, and we headed straight for Isabella's house. Despite our sudden arrival, Isabella warmly welcomed us. I explained the situation to her, and she said, You can stay here until you get yourself together. I'm sorry. We gratefully took up her offer, staying at her house for the night. When I woke up the next morning, Isabella was already gone and returned late in the afternoon. She looked really tired. Isabella, what happened? I asked. 
I had a talk with my family. I can't believe they're such fools, but don't worry, I made sure to get a contract, she said, smiling as she handed me a document. The document stipulated that my savings, which had been used without my consent, would be paid back in full. Isabella, did you go there to get this? I asked, fighting back tears. Well, our foolish family caused you trouble, Amy. I couldn't rest easy unless I did at least this much, she replied with a warm smile. Thank you so much, I expressed my gratitude and took James back to my parents' house the next day. Once I got back to my parents' house, I hired a lawyer and demanded a divorce from Tom. I got back nothing but placating messages from him, saying things like, I want you to reconsider, and it was my fault, but I had no second thoughts about the divorce. I deleted his number and made it clear through my lawyer that I had no intention of withdrawing the divorce, given that he had used my savings without my consent. He understood, thanks to my lawyer's explanation, that resisting the divorce any further would only disadvantage him, and he easily accepted it. Thanks to the contract Isabella provided, the stolen savings were promptly paid back. My lawyer told me that they had to let go of their condo and use the money from its sale to pay me back, however, my stolen savings were merely a down payment. Even after the sale of the condo, there was still a remaining loan, which stayed as a debt from my in-laws. Tom was also hit with penalties, and I've been demanding a fair amount of child support until James turns 18. Apparently, Tom and his parents are now living together in a tiny old apartment. With that, my revenge was perfectly complete. Now, I am living happily with James, with the support of my parents, at my parents' home. I still see Isabella regularly, and we continue to maintain a good relationship. Insisting that she doesn't want to be involved with her family anymore, Isabella cut off relations with her family. Isabella is now expecting a child, we promise to hang out as a group of five, taking James along once the baby is born. By that time, I want to be independent and be a mother James can be proud of. With these thoughts in mind, I cherish each day as I live it. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and if you're curious to see where this journey takes us next, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss a single update. Your support is what keeps this channel alive and kicking, and every like, comment, and share means the world to us. We've got plenty more stories, insights, and surprises coming your way, so stay tuned for the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.